Hello, welcome to my tech fan. In this video, I'm testing antibacterial and antimicrobial filaments from the food safety aspect. I'm Igor and I work as a teacher and researcher on St. Ishan University in food engineering department. And approximately half years ago, I created my first video about food safe 3D printing. Uh, if you didn't saw that video, I definitely recommend you to see it because a few things I will not mention in this video. For example, I was talking there about uh, what are food grade filaments, uh, what are recommended uh, nozzle types and materials. I also uh, mentioned that uh, FD and 3D printing is technology where we place uh, plastic layer by layer and between those layers there are gaps uh, which is perfect place for bacterial colonies because it is very hard to clean them from uh, those gaps and uh, here is the where maybe these antibacterial filaments may help because they have some metallic ions uh, inside and they this give this filament this antibacterial properties these antibacterial filaments are not cheap uh, I will test in this video copper 3D purement uh, antimicrobial filament and uh, filament with pH antibacterial PLA. This is not sponsored video. I bought all three types of these uh, antibacterial filaments. Uh, actually, uh, for copper 3D and purement, I found a website where I can buy, buy a sample, so I bought 20 meters of this filament. And from uh, filament with pH, uh, I bought the full spool. Well, let's analyze these uh, filaments one by one. I'm now on Copper 3D website and this is the information for Plective antibacterial filament. Well, you can see here different informations. Non-toxic product, which is important for me for <laughs> these tests. But very useful is this uh, booklet PDF information about this uh, product. And uh, from it, I can see them, they advertise it mostly as a medical product, which has direct contact with the skin. Recommended printing temperature be is between 190 and 210 degrees Celsius. So I print it with 205 degrees Celsius. And uh, from tested filaments, uh, these give the best results. So those uh, test probe cups uh, looks perfectly and even those uh, test probes for my mechanical test, I will show you that later, it looks very nice. So these give me the best printing quality from uh, tested antibacterial filaments. Next filament in this test will be the Pyramid antimicrobial filament. Don't be confused, this is priced for 0 0.6 kilograms. A uh, recommended printed temperature is between 200 and 230 degrees Celsius, so I printed it in 220 degrees Celsius. And here I can see there is an FDA certificate because I have only uh, samples of this filament, so I didn't bought the full spool. And yes, it has a recommendation for food industry. So it says it is a filament and it's safe enough for home use. We will see. And um, probably because of this higher temperature and maybe there was some moisture in the filament, but uh, the worst quality printing quality I got with this filament. So I had a lot of stringing in the, in the object and uh, also obvi it was visually uh, obvious that the surface is not so good so maybe you will see this effect at the mechanical test you will see later in this uh, video and third filament in this test is the filament you can find information on filament.agu it will redirect you to the, this site uh, it is uh, antibacterial PLA with recommended printing temperature between 195 and 215 degrees Celsius, so I printed my test probes on 210 degrees Celsius. I tried to reproduce this image with the moldy bread without success, you will see it later. Here we have some information about benefits applications. And also very important for me in this test, uh, there are some information about food safety. It cost me $75 one spool. If I calculate it to one kilogram, it, it, the price is almost $100 per, per one kilogram of the filament. 
And the fourth filament in this test is the Prusalent PLA, which is not antibacterial filament. I will use it only as a reference material, so I can compare the antibacterial filaments with the ordinary material. I will compare the antibacterial properties and also the strength test later in this video. This experiment was created in cooperation with the University of Novi Sad, uh, with the Department of Biotechnology and Pharmaceutical Engineering, thanks to my colleague Jovana Grafovac. How will this experiment look like? Well, actually, I'll 3D print some cups and I will send them to University in Novi Sad uh, for analyzing. I will create a free cups for each filament and also I will add a, just a simple PLA, which is actually Prusen and PLA, for reference to, so we can compare the effect of the antibacterial filament compared to regular filament. And they simulated using in a kitchen with the milk. For example, they placed a milk, left there maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and then they washed, washed the cup, but only under the tap using a, a dish soap, not in the dishwashing machine because it cannot handle high temperatures. And then left there uh, to repeat the procedure next day. And after 10 days, uh, they checked the bacteria colonies on the surface. And these are the results. Well, let's summarize them in the table. So, uh, in this column, you can see the measured values, and these are now calculated uh, colony forming units per square centimeter, and these are average values from these numbers. So, I summarize here uh, the average values just for comparison. So, this is for reference ordinary pili, and these three are antibacterial filaments. And uh, also you can see these results in this table. Uh, approximately uh, four or five times uh, bigger were the CFU unit per square centimeter with the regular PLA. So effect of the antibacterial filaments is obvious, but as you can see from this number, from food safety aspect, it's not perfect. Science, I don't have any experience with these filaments. Uh, I printed some test probes because I want to do some mechanical tests. Again, uh, the results will be compared with the simple ordinary PLA. I got so many comments that my previous setup was too dangerous using my own weight uh, as a load for the testing. So I built this one. The, uh, with this I can measure up to 500 kilograms. But it's, it's a little bit overkill because for smaller weight it's, it's, uh, it's very hard to measure with this one. But uh, yes, it's safer. But it's boring, even for me. So the only thing, I, uh, the only reason I measure now on this scale because I can measure a higher load. But uh, probably in the future when I will measure a smaller load, I will use my own weight. So this is my new setup. This is one ton uh, chain hoist. And this is 500 kilogram crane scale. And this is my test probe. For probes printed in vertical position, I have to remove those additional supports I created just in case to have better grip between object and the printing bed. These four are printed in horizontal position.
finally this broke where it should you know, where it's predicted to break. So these are printed in vertical position and as you can see only except the copper 3D uh, they broke on, on wrong place. Hmm. These are printed in horizontal position and, and each one uh, broke on, on correct place. Okay, in this table you can see the results of the test or pulling test. So these values are uh, in kilogram measured with the horizontal test probe. And these are values with the vertically printed test probe, which are of course smaller. And also I calculated here in megapascals or Newton per square millimeter. Uh, here you can see the equation of the calculating, but let's see the graph. So uh, it looks like they're quite similar except the uh, pure amount. Uh, so uh, I noticed the pretty quality is not so good with, like with the other three filaments used in this test. Um, maybe because the moisture, I'm not sure, but it was visually uh, obvious that uh, the printing quality is not so good maybe I should play a little bit with temperature but uh, with the recommended printing settings these results I got and in my last experiment less scientific I tried to reproduce this image so first I tried with the moldy peach I left there a few days and uh, later I removed it and uh, I didn't saw any noticeable difference see, on these test probes. Then I tried with the moldy bread. Again left there a few days and then I removed these uh, pieces. But again nothing visible difference uh, on these test probes. The conclusions. Well, this antibacterial filament uh, really works compared to regular PLA, so those uh, built-in metal ions complexes block the metabolic processes of the bacteria. But as you saw, from food safety aspect, they are not perfect. For example, for me at home, uh, I wouldn't use it uh, to 3D print some object which has direct contact with the food. Of course, it depends what kind of food and how long you want to take it. For example, whiskey or... or uh, for uh, vodka uh, it is less risky uh, but for milk or egg it is very high risk so definitely don't use for that kind of foods. If I really need uh, CD printed objects with direct contact with the food uh, so far the best solution I know is coating with epoxy resin because in that case the surface will be very smooth and it's much easier to clean it uh, to remove all those bacteria from the surface. But uh, for what to use this antibacterial filament, because I have a whole spool from it, well, I will use it to print some object which has direct contact with the skin or mouth. For example, I will 3D print a GoPro mount, which I have to hold it with my mouth. Or I already printed a whistle from my youngest daughter, because I know that whistle will fall down, she will place it in the toy box for a days and then take it, again use it and... Uh, uh, that's it's much better to use uh, an antibacterial filament for that compared to the regular filament. Of course, <laughs> the printing whistle was a bad idea now, uh, weeks later, but not because of the material, beca but because of uh, the noise, too much noise. So think twice before you uh, print a whistle for your kid. Okay, I hope this information is very useful to you too. Uh, thank you for watching and um, happy printing. Bye.